and we read the last chapter of the last verse in this chapter, I believe, maybe a little bit, and the way that we become part of that city, part of that church, and to have our name written in heaven. You've got to have your name written in heaven. And the only way we're going to have our name written in heaven is to be willing to live a holy life because the city that He constructed is constructed in a holy way for a holy God that He may make His people holy. He said, Be ye holy for I am holy. And uh, that's, what, that's the way we enter into that church and enter into that dwelling place. And if you're a born again believer today, then you can be part of that same body. If you turn your life over to God, you can be part of that. But it is not a denomination. Uh, but here in verse number 9, we like to begin here. He says, There came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. Now, if you read uh, a few chapters before this, you can read about those seven angels and how they were getting the message of uh, the seven vials of the full of the seven last plagues. And we preached not long ago in North Baltimore about that, but, but they bring out the wrath of God because it represents the wrath of God. And, and one of the same angels, an angel is simply a messenger, right? And I know that we've been programmed in our minds when we think about an angel is a celestial being flying around uh, in a celestial heaven with wings and a halo over head. But, but I want you to kind of reprogram your mind for just a little bit and understand an angel is a messenger from God, right? An angel is a messenger that brings God's Word. And, and these angels which have the seven vials of the seven last plagues, the ones that just preach the wrath of God, not many chapters before this, and talk with me saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And if you'll have it tonight, you may have a preacher, a preach hellfire and brimstone in one message, and in the next message, you'll preach the grace of God, right? See, the same angel can preach judgment unto people, and preach against sin, and turn right around the next message, and preach of uh, the deliverance from sin. And the deliverance yeah. from the judgment of God. And it's the same thing right here. We've got the same angel that, that brought the wrath of God down in the message. is the same one that looked at John and, and said, Let me show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And I want you to see the bride, the Lamb's wife here tonight. And, and he said, He carried me away in the Spirit. You see, there we are again. It's not a literal uh, thing that we're talking about. It's not something that you can physically touch with your hands or see with your eyes, it's something that is a, a spiritual design by God because even to be able to reveal this from the John, he had to be carried away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain. He had to go to a place that's higher than the surrounding hills, something that's higher than what people may be able to look at. It's a higher elevation. Anybody ever been to a high elevation to where maybe even the oxygen begins to be lower and it's harder to breathe? It, it's something that it, it's not easy to uh, have habitation there, right? He brought him up on the high mountain and he began to, he wanted to show him the bride and the Lamb's wife. And he showed him the great city. Now I thought he just got these things, he's going to show him the bride. Well, the bride and the great city are one and the same. It's yeah, different man. analogies to then maybe bring out a different function of what the church is because the church should be a city of refuge to the people that need help. The church needs to be represented as a bride which represents a relationship between his people and their God. And, and that's how he looks at it. He took him up on this mountain and he showed him a great city, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her life was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone. And God help me tonight. I won't preach a little bit about that light tonight. And, and that's why the one reason I wanted it to rain, I wanted it to get dark, I wanted the, uh, the clouds to come over uh, uh, the sea. Uh, as we think about the light of God, it has nothing to do with the sun that we've got in the sky. It has nothing to do about the natural rain. It has nothing to do about the things that we can see with our natural eyes. It has nothing to do with that. He said here that the light of this video, I mean, he talked about was like the, of the light of the Jasper Tower. If you read, uh, I believe in chapter number four, he talks about the one uh, that was sitting on the throne and, uh, and he looked as if it were uh, a Jasper Stone. And he talked, he was sitting on the throne today. Uh, uh, I need you tonight that Jesus Christ is still on the throne. He, he has a kingdom and he is the king of the kingdom. You, you can't have a kingdom without a king and he is the king. He said that he 
what place that he had. He was the king of kings uh, and the Lord of lords tonight, right? I bet the one that was on the throne he looked at uh, to uh, have one of the jasper stones. Uh, so if you'll have it tonight uh, of the light that is in this city, we'll read it just a little bit. It's no other than Jesus Christ himself. And, and to begin to uh, flip on over here just a little bit, uh, uh, let's go on over uh, on uh, this uh, same thought. Continues on to uh, verse number 23. In chapter 21 of Revelation, on down in 23, Bible said in the city had no need of the sun. Guess, guess what? Uh, this city has nothing to do with the sun that you see out there. See, it got dark and just a little while ago. Uh, the rain piles moved in and, and the rain came down. Uh, uh, it has nothing to do uh, uh, with the light in the city that we're preaching about tonight. Jesus Christ is the light of that city, right? I mean, he said here that need no sun, that neither of the moon that uh, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. What is the Lamb? Uh, whenever I think about John the Baptist, when he was there on River Jordan, and he was baptizing people there uh, under repentance, uh, and then all of a sudden Jesus appeared, and he began to walk down the bank of the Jordan River, uh, and he looked at him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, now that Lamb that we're talking about is the same Lamb that John the Baptist saw uh, coming down the River Jordan. Uh, that's the light of this city, praise God. Uh, and we're living in a city if you're saved, if you're born again. And you're part of that family. You're living in a place where there is no darkness, right? I might not ahead of myself, but he said, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Wouldn't it be nice to be in a place where we don't have to worry about night? Amen. I, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes, naturally speaking, I like to see the sun go down. Uh, because you can't touch my grandkids that hardly even go to bed if the sun's still shining. You say, boy, it's time to go to bed. I said, don't love that. They stand down the house. I said, it's bedtime. And they said, well, I feel like I'm being punished. It ain't even dark yet. Look at the sun. You ain't being punished. They said, well, it's still daylight outside. Well, well, it doesn't make any difference. This time of the year, you can't look outside. To understand what time it is. It's still 8.30 and it's your bedtime. Right? And so, well, I know about a city where you got to worry about it. Amen? That's not even going to be in out there. But we're going to be in a place where we don't have to worry about this physical body because this physical body is not going to be there. The Bible says that the flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And it is a spiritual realm. Amen. The hour cometh that now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if we worship him tonight, there is no other way to worship God except in the spirit. You can do it, uh, uh, maybe or try to do it rather, with rituals. You can try to do it with a, a program. You can try to do it with man-made organizations. But friend, you'll never be able to worship God until you have the Spirit of God on the inside that you might have connection with Him that your spirit Amen. will connect with His Spirit because your spirit has become His Spirit and then you can worship God. Amen. Amen. Let me think about this right here. He said there'll be no night there. We've got some other scriptures we'd like to go to in uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. The Bible says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to get the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And, and I want to, if I don't bring out anything else tonight, I want you to understand what that light is. And I know we just got through saying that that light is Jesus Christ. He's the light of this city. But the Bible said right here, it is the light of knowledge. The light of knowledge. And if we have, but you ever heard the phrase, well, the light just came on? Amen. We may have nothing to do with church or anything. You may have been at work and you're trying to explain something to somebody or somebody is trying to explain something to you and then they just had an aha moment. Well, the light came on. That means that they finally got it. Amen. As a preacher told me one time that the eye, talking about me, was like a Polaroid camera. Sometimes it takes me a while to get the picture. So it may take me a little longer that I might have the aha moment. But that's what we're talking about tonight. Jesus Christ 
is the light of the world. We'll read here in just a little bit. He came down from the glory on high that he might bring the light of the knowledge of God to this world. See, people thought that the human under the rituals and the, of the, uh, I guess, the ordinances of the Old Testament law, but, but they never even came close. Uh, they got to the place to where the, that they would rather have sacrifice rather than they would have uh, obedience. And God tried to tell them, said, son, uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. They couldn't hit it. Uh, they stayed in condemnation because they stayed in sin. Uh, uh, they began to stay rebellious against God and, and they would get punished. they go under bondage and, and then God came Tell them, and, and finally Jesus came to bring the aha moment to let people know this is what God is trying to tell you. This is what God is trying to tell you from the very beginning, but you couldn't get understanding. We go on here a little bit further here in uh, our uh, part of Malachi, rather, chapter number four, verse number two. The Bible says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, capital S U N, is how that's written, of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Isn't it amazing how a Malachi got a vision about what John was going to see on the Isle of Patmos right down in the book of Revelation? Because he knew that the S U N, capital S U N, of righteousness is going to come. He represented the S O N as an S U N because John told them in Revelation 21 there's going to be no need of the S U N in the sky. But there is an S O N that's going to be your S U N in this city. He's going to be the one that brings a light into you. The Bible said he's going to have healing in his wings. That's a message altogether. Don't want to get into that too deep, but I will say this before I stop. You look at in the Old Testament how the those priests and, and the Jews had to wear the, uh, the dress and the garb uh, and the, the hems of their garments had to be in, in such a way that uh, they, they decorated them a way to represent all the commandments under the law, right? And people say, well, there's only 10 commandments. There's 613 commandments. They would tie knots and have frazzles or uh, tassels around their garment and it represented the law. They would even wear phylacteries on their arms and on their foreheads to represent certain scriptures. And they, they wore that that way. But the, uh, even Jesus told them they were like white sepulchers. On the outside, they looked pretty. But on the inside, they were full of dead men's bones. And that's what everybody saw. They would see somebody walking around with religious garb on it. And they're just walking around uh, uh, just, uh, uh, just maybe in a religious way. But deep down inside, they didn't have a change in their life, right? You know what else they called it? that hymn of their garment? It was called a wing. Amen. It was called wings. You read it in the Old Testament. I don't want to get into another message now. But then my mind goes over to the woman that had the issue of love. And she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. No doubt she read Malachi chapter number 2. That there was a son of righteousness come that's going to have healing in his wings. She looked at somebody that had lived a life that was a righteous way of living. Not hypocritical like the Pharisees, but was living a righteous life that was surrendering his will to his God's will. And they said, now that man is wearing that part in such a way that it represents the God of heaven. And it represents the commandments that were in the tassels at the bottom of his hymn. And she wanted to touch the hem of his garment because there was something different about that man. Friend, I'm telling you, there's something different about the Son of God. There's something different about him than all the other religions and, and all these things that people are depending upon. There's something different about this God. And he came down from heaven on high to give us that aha homeowner. We might understand what it's like to see the God of heaven. Do you believe you can get a glimpse of God today? Amen. Amen. You get a glimpse of God today. He'll give you a glimpse every now and then and every time that He shows you His Word and He shows you His righteousness. No doubt you will fall on your knees and say, I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips like Isaiah said. And then you'll will under the pressure, praise God, because God is a wonderful person or a wonderful God that has no sin in Him that is a righteous God. And whenever we see Him, we'll understand how that we are falling short. But he said, 1 John 1 and 5 through 6, he said, This then is the message which we have heard of Him and declared unto you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. We've already established that the light is the knowledge and He's an all-knowing God. He knows everything. There's nothing He doesn't know. And, uh, and, and there's no darkness at all. Verse number 6 said, If we say 
we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and tell not the truth. John chapter 9 and 5 says, As long as I am in the world, this is what Jesus said. He said, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world. See, Jesus came in the flesh to show people what the knowledge of God was. See, we're preaching on the revelation of Jesus Christ, right? Isn't that what we're talking about this week? The revelation of it's a revealing book. And not if you start in the book of Revelation, if we'll read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the revelation started in. Jesus came and began to reveal himself in his own holiness to the world that is living in darkness. The God of heaven sent light down in a dark place, a light shining out of a dark place that they might see how holy God is. But he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And in Matthew chapter number 5, I just want to turn there. Chapter number 5 and verse 14. Matthew 5 and 14. If you want to turn there, we'll look at this and, and break this down. We're going to read 14 through 16. Pray for me today. And then this is Jesus talking this to his disciples. He says, now we just got through saying, he says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. And then now he's talking this to his disciples. He says, ye are the light of the world. And a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We are part of that city, right? I hope we can establish that. If you're a born-again believer, washed in the blood of Jesus, amen. amen, you're part of that city. And he said that ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and give light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. But he said that he giveth light unto all that are in the house. And I've told him before, I can't remember where I preached one time, but I told him I'll tell you this. If we don't if we don't live close enough to God to where the light of God shines in the house, I can about guarantee you it's not shining when we walk out of the house. Amen. And if we can't gather together in oneness and show the light of God, whenever times get dark and times get tough, we're on a job or maybe something's going on in Walmart, somebody jumps in line or ain't nobody there to hit you and loads out and uh, maybe somebody cuts you off going down 240 uh, or maybe somebody, uh, maybe a lie tells a lie about you or whatever the case may be. If your light's not shining in the house of God, I can about guarantee you it's not shining out of here. Amen. Amen. Somebody lose their temper Amen. in the house of God with, with people of God, like-minded people that love God, that we say we've got the light of God, the love of God, and the knowledge of God. If we can't show it here, we're probably never going to be able to show it out there. Amen. And you want to let your light so shine that people that are out in this world, whenever they see it, they'll understand that we are the children of God. Amen. But we are now the light of the world. Second Peter. 1 and 19, he says, uh, toward the end of that verse, he says, As unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. And I began to think about that day star arise and, and uh, uh, I, 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 I'll just go ahead and jump into this. Revelation number 12, I mentioned briefly the other night. I talked about there was a great wonder in heaven and there was a, a, a woman that was clothed in the sun and a moon under her feet and, and she had that had that light that, uh, that was covering them and the Bible said right here till the day star arise in your heart. You know what sun, the sun is a star? I mean you study a, a little bit about that. The sun is a star. And they say they, there's something different about a star than, than uh, other things that you see shine. It's like the moon, right? That woman was, that was clothed in the sun and the moon was under her feet. The star was shining from within. It was burning from within, right? You read about after Jesus' resurrection and then he met the two uh, disciples on the road to Emmaus and whenever they got down talking to, to Jesus and they got there and began to talking amongst themselves, they said, did not we burn from within? Where did that burn come from? That came from the Son of Righteousness that Malachi talked about. He began to speak to them. They were burning from within. But he said, until the day star arise in your heart. A star is going to burn from the inside. Amen. Don't have to have anything on the outside to make it shine. The moon is a reflection of the sun. Moon represents the Old Testament. 
is a represent a, a reflection of the sun. But we're living in a time that we're not only is Jesus Christ the light of the world, but we have become the light of the world when the day star arrives in our hearts. When Jesus comes in our hearts, then we should burn with him without any external help from anybody else. I know that you and I get fueled for one another, and the Bible even says that iron sharpened and iron, I understand that. But if you're in a way that you don't want to worship God, uh, I can still worship God on the inside because, friend, the day star has arose in my heart. He has illuminated who God is to me, uh, and how you see it is not going to depend on how I worship God. Amen. God has Amen. blessed me. Brother David, I know where God brought me from. Amen. I remember the dark place that God shined the light of the gospel in my life. I know where I was at. And God came down to my level and began to speak to me. And He shined the light so bright that He blinded me to everything else. Amen. Amen. What do you think happened to the Apostle Paul whenever he was on the road to, uh, to uh, uh, on the road to Damascus? Or Damascus? Is that where it was? Amen. I, right. Amen. I was thinking of Emmaus a while ago. I just mixed them two words up. If it wasn't the word yesterday, it is today. But <laughs> it was on the road to Damascus, and, and he had letters in his pocket to arrest people, right? That were Christians because he thought he was doing right. He was living under the light of the law. He was living under the reflection of the sun that had arrived. Amen. He was still he was still living in that Old Testament law, thinking he was doing the right thing. And he was going to arrest those people because they were living and preaching things contrary unto the law. But he was on the road to Damascus. And the Bible said about 12 o'clock, uh, uh, there was a light that shined down was brighter than the new day sun. And the Bible said that he was blinded, amen. And it blinded him. What did it blind him from? It blinded him. He was so bright and so glorious of uh, uh, the things of the law. It just kind of vanished out of his mind. Amen. You may have religion in your life, but whenever God truly shows you what salvation is, religion won't do anymore. When it's all said and done, uh, he gave his life to God. He said, all those things that I did, I just count as done and as lost. It ain't nothing compared to Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he blinded him by the brightness of his coming. Amen. And he came to him on the road to Damascus and blinded him of everything else that used to be so important to him. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was a Hebrew of Hebrew. I mean, concerning the law, he was flawless. He did everything. He crossed the T's. He dotted the I's. He made sure everything was just right according to the law. And Jesus let him know that still ain't good enough. He told him in one place, he said, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will have no wise enter into the kingdom of God. He let them know it's better than what they're doing, and you can't do it without me. That's why I came. I came that you might have my righteousness in you. But he goes on to say here, and for, uh, as we read there in uh, 2 Peter 1 and 19, we'll go on to Ephesians 5 and 8. He says, for ye were sometime darkness, but now are you light in the Lord, walk as children of the light. See, that's all the revelation was, was to bring the knowledge of God. And he said right here, you're the children of the light, walk as children of the light. We have the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you've been here for the last couple of nights, hopefully you have understood one thing, that Jesus Christ is the only way. He came and let them know who he was. He told them in the Old Testament, one thing that God said, whenever I go, who am I going to tell them that sent me? He said, tell them I am sent you. I am that I am. No doubt it probably confused him. He thought, what, what does that even mean? But see, Jesus came and he brought life to that. He said, I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. I am the living bread. I am the resurrection. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Amen. Amen. He let me brought light into the world. He brought the knowledge of who He really was. Praise God. So no matter what you need in life, Jesus is the answer. Amen. 
Whatever it is that you're needing, whatever's empty in your life, he said, I am that. Whatever it is that you're looking for, whatever it is that you got a desire, then you're going to the bottle, then you're going to the drugs, then you're going to the entertainment. You don't even know what you're looking for. And the whole time Jesus is telling you right now, he said, I am. Amen. I am the one that'll fill that void that you're so empty inside. I am the one that'll take Amen. care of the hurt that's in your soul. That desire you got there's something better, friend. I'm telling you, there's something better today. Amen. He just brought the knowledge of himself down here. He said, I'm the light of the world. I'm going to bring the knowledge of the glory of God that you might understand who he is. Amen. And if you truly understand what the light is, friend, I am telling you without a doubt, there is no way anybody can influence you any other way. Amen. Right. I read one place here. I believe I'll just pull it up. Matthew chapter number 17. Put them over there a few or a few chapters from where we just read Matthew. Matthew 17 and 14. Just read this. He said, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For sometimes he falls into the fire and off into the water. And I, I, brought, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus said, and, and then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. He said, Preacher, what does that got to do with anything? Have you ever studied what that uh, word lunatic really is? Look, loon is a word that's derived from lunar. Which, talking about the lunes, right? A lunar eclipse. They have a lunar calendar. This was a lunatic. And they even used it at one time. They, uh, when you go to read down through history, they said he was affected by the moon. It's a full moon. They said that the, the emergency rooms are full. Whenever it's a full moon, people go crazy. I guess they go out and think they need to hire the moon. I don't know. Maybe they're uh, what what's that thing's called a uh, uh, werewolf. I almost said vampire, but I knew they were wrong. <laughs> maybe maybe they was a, maybe they're werewolves. I don't know what they are. But see, when the when you think about the moon, I just got through saying the moon is just a reflection of the sun, and then the moon, whenever its gravitational forces, it you know how the the sea comes in and out. They say that's affected by the moon. Whenever you got a full moon, it gets closer to the earth and then it brings the, the seas up and then whenever it goes away, it comes back out and it, it goes back and forth and people go crazy whenever it's a full moon. The animals begin to scurry out whenever it's a full moon and people are affected by that, right? Things are affected by the people plant their crops by the moon. They, there's a calendar that tells you when you're supposed to plant stuff and and they said, well, when the signs are in the knees or in the feet or in the elbows, or I, I don't understand all that stuff. I make fun of people that do that. If you do that, don't, don't take a fish for that. But, but all that goes back to the moon. Amen. So what's this lunatic right here? This lunatic evidently was affected by things external. Amen. Amen. This guy right here was evidently affected by things external. Said that one minute he was in the fire, the next minute he was in the water. You ever seen a Christian like that? On fire for God one minute, and then you just pour a cup of cold water on top of them the day. They're happy one day, mad as fire the next. They're joyful one day, down and depressed the next. They're up and down, up and down. Looks like a heartbeat that you see on a stand when they got those speakers hooked up to you. That's the way their life is. They're no more than the lunatic. They're affected by everything. Whenever they're having a good day, they're ready to praise God. But when they're having a bad day, they don't want to have nothing to do with God. Because they're judging God by external circumstances. Amen. Amen. Whenever you hear people say, well, God has been good to me. I understand where people are coming from. That they even talk about, maybe I'm glad I've got a house. I'm glad I can pay them. And yes, I'm glad I can pay my bills. I'm glad I've got a house. I'm glad I've got clothes on my back. I'm glad I've got food in a cupboard. I 
I'm glad and I thank God for that because I mean he could he but Bible said that God giveth and God taketh away, right? I can have it today and be gone tomorrow. But if I didn't have a house to live in, if I did not have any clothes on my back, and if I did not have food on my cupboard, and I didn't have any type of shelter, friend, I am telling you, God is still good. And I don't have to have those things. I shouldn't be affected by outside circumstances and walk around like a lunatic Christian. We need to have the light burning from within and not be affected by everything else. Amen. And this man, he is hot one minute, cold the next. I don't want to be hot one minute, cold the next. I want to love God no matter what's going on. The only way you're going to do that is when that light is shining on the inside so bright that that day star arrives in your hearts. Amen. Amen. If you don't know who God is, I hope the Spirit of God will reveal to you how precious He is. He is the best thing that ever happened to this world. Amen. He's the best thing that ever happened to me, I promise you. You can ask my wife and without a doubt, she will say that God was the best thing that ever happened to me. The things she had to put up with before I got saved, I feel sorry for her. She had every right to kick me to the curb, run me off. I thank God that she didn't. I'm going to say she just didn't have enough sense to get rid of me. Amen. I'm glad that she stayed with me. Amen. Amen. Because she was able to see something different than what I was. Amen. Amen. It came to a point when the light of God shined down. And he showed me how wonderful he was. I yielded at the new day, son, and got down there was a lot brighter than what we could ever imagine outside here. That's why this city in Revelation 21 has no need of that son. Amen. There is a son of God that came down and has given his life to this whole world that they may see the knowledge of God. I want people to know who God is. God is a good God. God is a just God. God never changes. God gives the light of the knowledge of the gospel. I was talking to somebody just the other day about how the, I know that, that God continues to give more light and He does that maybe for one generation to the next or maybe He just does it in the generation in our own life as we grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ. Amen. Amen. But I will say this, and this is a conversation me and a brother had after church uh, the other night. The Allowing sin to come in your life is not the light of God. Amen. Amen. Can I say that? Amen. Allowing sin to come in your life, well, there's more light given now, and, and God's grace is sufficient, and, and all that is is, is Satan trying to infiltrate into the church. God Amen. never likes it. He didn't like it in the garden. He didn't like it when he died for it, and friend, he don't like it today. Amen. His church is pure. His church is clean. He said that he might present it to himself without spot and without wrinkle. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible said. I didn't write it and I didn't say it. I just read it and repeated it to you. Amen. But that is the church that God has. And our lives need to reflect that. If it doesn't, I encourage you to allow the day star to arise in your heart. So you won't be a religious fanatic one minute. And then all of a sudden going with everybody else on the job the next. You ever seen somebody just kind of uh, conform to whoever's around them? Amen. Amen. I've seen people do that. drives me crazy. I, I consider myself kind of like Popeye. Not because I got big four on but because I am who I am. Amen. <laughs> Amen. we got the ones over 50 laughing at that. They know who Popeye is. The rest of us is Popeye. <laughs> Google it. Find out who Popeye is. He's a cool cartoon. He'll eat spinach, and then he'll get big fluffy. And he'll say, I am who I am. I am who I am. Amen. I'm a, a guy that loves God. I don't care who's around. Amen. I'm going to be able to bow my head and pray to the Almighty God regardless of who's around. I don't care who looks at me sideways or who makes fun of me or who laughs at me. I don't care. I'm serving the God of heaven. Why do I do that, Brother Ed? Because he showed me who he was. He revealed to me by the light of the knowledge of who God is through Jesus Christ. And that's what the revelation of Jesus Christ is. He's trying to tell people who he is. All those 
uh, symbols and signs and, and things that we read, types and shadows uh, uh, throughout Revelation, uh, going back to the Old Testament, back to the New. He just trying to say, I'm just telling you, all these beasts that are coming against this, all these things or enemies that are coming against them, they talk about a beast out of the sea, the beast come out of the earth, and you got the dragon and all they're coming against God's church. Amen. But you know what he's trying to tell them through it all? If you'll just stick with me, I promise you, you'll be an overcomer. Amen. 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 Don't be afraid of all that typology in Revelation. There's enemies that's coming against you if you try to live for God. Amen. He's trying to reveal to people in the Revelation that you, my friend, can be an overcomer. Amen. You can overcome that. So where are you tonight? Where are you? Are you the type that is just affected by everybody else? You know how you can tell sometimes uh, somebody that's, uh, I hate to use the word lunatic because I know what we think of nowadays. Somebody that's truly affected by everything else going around, they're church offers. Amen. 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 They'll go to this church over here for a little while. Boy, everything's going good. Whenever it goes through a tough spot, they're ready to get their toys and they're going to go down here. But this church over here, and it seems like they're doing a little bit better. I, I want to go worship down over here, and then all of a sudden they go through a dry time, and, and people may be hurting. They don't know what's going on. Maybe they're just having a hard time in their house, and they need help. But, but I don't know. I'm affected by that. I'm going to go over here now. And I'm going to I'm going to take my stuff over here, my toys, and I'm going to go to this house, and I'm going to worship with this people. Amen. Affected by everybody around you. Amen. Ask God where you want to be. Say, God, where do you want me to plant my roots? And when you plant your roots out, whether things are going good or whether things are going bad, you stay true to what God told you because you ain't there to worship the people anyway. You're there to worship the God of heaven and reveal himself to you. And you then you might be able to help the ones that are beside you that are hurting, that are drying up, that are having a hard time, and they're just broken because things are going on in their life, and they're having a hard time praising God. But if you'll be there, be a true blue, and let the light of God shine through you, then you might be able to help them. Amen. 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 I think about the, I think about the ones I believe it was Gideon there, whenever he came to the point where he had a, a big army, and God told him he had too many. Amen. Long story short, he had 27,000 people and he ended up got over 11 and a half, 300, I believe it was. And he, got, he go, gets ready to go into battle. What did he go into battle with? He had a, I'm trying to remember what it, it was some sort of vessel. I can't remember what it was called. Somebody had to go to, what was it called in the Bible? I can't remember that. Some type of vessel. And then down in that vessel, he had a, had a lamp down inside of it. And then when it came time, he Basically, he didn't say it just me. Listen, he paraphrased. He said, I'm going to count three. One, two, three. What do we do? We're going to break this lamp. Right? Now, when they did, that, evidently that light shined when they broke the lamp, and their enemy ran from them. Thousands of people ran from 300 people because they let the light shine. You know, sometimes the light only shines whenever this earth and vessel is broken. Amen. Uh, sometimes that's what it takes. That's right. He said, why am I going through such a hard time? Maybe God wants that light to shine through your life. Amen. 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 Why me? I remember. That was one. I'm trying to remember who it was now. But there's a saint of God years ago. He got diagnosed with cancer. Great saint of God. And, and, uh, Bobby Gunners, who it was. Great saint of God. And, and had the Bible just about memorized. He taught, he taught the Word of God for years and years. He got diagnosed with cancer. Somebody asked him, said, I just don't understand. What, why in your world? Would God allow you, somebody like you, to get cancer? Why you? He looked at him straight face without hesitation and said, Why not? Amen. Why not? Do we think we're above those things? Hey, sometimes God wants us to be broken and our light is shining through. So people can see that we're still a saint of God, even if we are having a bad time. Even if our family does fall apart, we still stay true to God. If there ain't nothing surrounding us that will encourage us to worship God, we've got a light burning from within. The day star has a rose in my heart. And I'm going to worship God no matter what goes on around me. Amen. Sometimes it takes the time for us to be broken. 
He didn't want the woman, I believe it was Mary, got the feet of Jesus. She came in with an alabaster box full of ointment. And she broke that bottle. She broke that box to, and Amen. get that ointment out to anoint his feet. The Bible said the aroma filled the house. Amen. Sometimes it takes us to be broken before the true inward person comes out. Sometimes we just, I don't know, maybe we try to hide that light under a bushel that we read a while ago. God wants our light to so shine that people in this world can see the knowledge we not not that we can quote scripture to them. I mean, you can quote scripture all day long, you still not have the light of God inside. Amen. Because you you've got an intellect that you you've got the ability that God's blessed you with, you can memorize scripture. Amen. But whenever you, your life is reflecting the righteousness of God, then you've got the day star in your heart. He has a rose in your heart. And it can shine whether you're broken or shine whether you're not broken. We need to be able to shine for God and have the righteousness of God inside of our life whether we're having a good day or a bad day. Whether everybody agrees with us or whether they don't agree with us. Whether church is going fine or whether church ain't going fine. Amen. Amen. Whether you've got support or whether you don't have support. Whether you're healthy or whether you're sick. Whether you're rich or whether you're poor, it don't make any difference. We need to have the light of the gospel of Christ in our life. And if we don't, not just in our head, we've got to have it in our life. If it's going to shine out. Amen. Have you been a holy big Christian? Are you one that's not affected by outside circumstances? He said, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. Then he goes on to say, he said, ye are the light of the world. People need to see the knowledge of God through your life, not through your lips. Give people lip service. Amen. In one place he said, you worship me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Amen. He didn't say that the day star arise in your lips. He said the day star arise in your heart. Amen. He'll change you from the inside out. Amen. He changes the inside. The outside will follow. And then that light will shine out. Amen. If you would stand.